Hold on one second, guys. Let me just get all set up here. All right, there we go. So what's up, guys? Welcome to another MLB The Show 21 stream here on Twitch. I'm next Gen 24 And today, we're going to be... <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Still got that cough. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be finishing up on the second of two daily moment, uh, daily moments evolution programs that you can find just by doing the daily moments programs. So you guys recall that the first one that I did was Mike Scott. Uh, you know, I, I honestly that took me less time than I initially thought. But the other one, the other one is Mr. Robin Yao. Uh, this one, I can tell you, I am not looking forward to, um, because this card, it has no power. See, the problem with, um, the problem with these, with these cards, as I'll show you real quick here, alright, look at this. They're asking me to get an extra base hit with Robin Yao. And he's got no power. The thing he has going for him is his speed, but good luck getting. A, you'd have to basically rely on a gapper just to get uh, just to get an extra base hit. So I knew that this was going to be a tough. This was going to be a tough one. Um, hitting hitting a hitting evolution program is not necessarily one that I look most forward to. It's it sucks. It really does. But it is what it is, so... I mean, maybe I'm just making it out to be way worse than it actually is. In fact, I'm... Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Sometimes the game just screws you over itself. You know? Be like, oh, you thought you were gonna get an extra big hit? Uh, extra big hit there? <laughs> nope. Jesus Christ. Um, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. Uh, could you? Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry, guys. It, it, you know, I was just looking at my bit rate, and it was saying it was very unstable. So, I don't want to get cut out in the middle of a stream. I want to be able to stream completely, but, uh, anywho, uh, so sometimes the game will screw you over, sometimes, you know, the attributes will screw you over. It, it, th again, this is why I don't like hitting evolution programs, but we gotta do what we gotta do with, so, Robin Yao, extra base hit, I will literally kill, uh, I will, I, I will go nuts if there is a moment here that says, oh, we need a home run. Oh, by the way, you got to do it with the bronze card. Really? So I hope that's not the next one. This one is, this one is just asking for, um, this one is just asking for an extra base hit. So the base running will screw you. Yeah, everything just screws you. It's not even your fault. That's why these evolution programs are just so damn frustrating. Uh, my family's just talking. Sorry. They're talking. They're talking about, you know, whatever. Thanksgiving plans for next week because apparently it was determined and I didn't even know this was an option that my family and I were going down to South Jersey next uh, next week for Thanksgiving. We're going to celebrate it with my with my aunt down there, um, which is something that we have not done since I believe 2018. I mean, I was, 
See, I was under the assumption that we had three plans, which was either go visit my grandparents, um, or go go visit my sister, which wouldn't have been an, uh, up in Vermont, which wouldn't have been an option for me, or with my other sister, uh, spend Thanksgiving with my other sister's fiance's family. So that was the impression I was under, and then my uh, and then my dad's like, "Oh no, we're gonna go, we're gonna go down to South Jersey, and we're gonna go celebrate." And I was like, "Since when was there a Plan D?" And look, guys, I'm not complaining. It's just I would have, I I would, uh, I, I just wanted, I, I wanted to know that that was an option because I initially thought it wasn't. Well, fuck it. I'm caught at this point. So, again, not upset about the idea, just didn't think it was an option. I mean, then again, I, uh, you know, I, I said that m my sister, or Thanksgiving at my sister's in Vermont wasn't an option for me either, but that was just for me. You know, the rest of my family can certainly could have gone up there. I could have gone into work and I could have had a Thanksgiving dinner with my co-workers and FaceTime with my family. I could have done that. But we went with option D, so uh, not upset by it, but now we just got to figure out logistics because the problem is I work that that entire week like the Monday the the uh, Monday through Friday that I'm working that entire week same same hour same schedule so I, I'm gonna have to bring my laptop with me because I got to be able to work and so we're gonna have to figure out the logistics so that I can work and and you know be able to be down there so that I guess that stuff will work itself out just right now we're still kind of figuring it figuring it out we'll get there I'm sure we'll get there worst comes to worst I just go with my aunt because my laptop's already got her Wi-Fi on there so just go be uh, go be with her and and um, and then just do the work there worst case scenario anywho so let me know what you guys plan on doing for Thanksgiving I, I hope you guys enjoy it uh, that is a that is basically me confirming that there will be no stream uh, Wednesday or Thursday of next week. From the sounds of it, it looks like my family wants to wants to be down there on Wednesday. So Wednesday and Thursday, don't expect a stream. Uh, Friday, that's still a possibility. It just depends on how soon my family can get can get back from because it's a two hour drive, and if I don't get off of work on Friday until 3 or 4 then it's going to be a little difficult because at that point I'm I'm arriving home at 6 the earliest probably going to be 6.30 maybe 7 I don't know again all the logistics that we need to figure out uh, logistics that my family and I have to figure out but please let me know what your plans are uh Hopefully you guys do have plans, and I hope you enjoy your Thanksgiving dinner. I know it's still a week away, but, you know, I'll, I'll still wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. I'll still wish it. Um, so, yeah, on on another matter, uh, you guys see me wearing a Hofstra shirt, this Hofstra gray shirt. I believe I actually have two of these, so if you... So I wear both of them, because uh, both of them are apparently mine. Um, just something that I want to bring up with Hofstra. First of all, well, no. 
Something I want to bring up with them, congratulations to both the men's and the women's soccer team on their conference championships. Uh, that's obviously a great a great uh, accomplishment by both programs. I was there from 2014 to 2018. I saw the men's win a conference championship. I saw the women's win a conference championship, go on to the NCAA tournament, but they never won it the same the same year. So, you know, again, congratulations to both of those programs. They were all solid when I was when I was there, and it's great to see that both of them are heading to the NCAA tournament for soccer. So, congratulations to the Hofstra Pride. You know, very very proud to have here this. But the only see the problem is you would think uh, the good thing uh, the one thing about Hofstra is that we don't have a football program. So all all our attention is really on basketball and the men's and the men's basketball team. No not no offense against the women. The women are fantastic. But of course I'm gonna say that. I'm biased. S- still it, it, I would be lying if I said that the sports at Hofstra or basically any college at all are evenly distributed because that's not true. We know basketball and football get the most attention. That's clear. Which is a shame because, like I said, Hofstra doesn't have a football program, so that just leaves the 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 men's basketball program. And we have so many good programs on our on our on our campus. Like you you heard me talk about soccer. I mean, we have a fantastic soccer program. We really do. It's just it doesn't get a whole lot of attention, at least not the attention that I that I believe it deserves. And then lacrosse is also a very popular uh, sport at Hofstra. I, I, honestly, we're like one of the we're uh, the program when I was there. When I was at Hofstra, it was actually almost it was almost top ranked in the nation one year. I, I think they came second in one poll. Once one poll, they were ranked second in the nation in terms of men's lacrosse. It was unbelievable. We we. Uh, they, the uh, AP gave gave the top spot to Penn State, which again, no bias here. I am a Penn State football fan, but I know how good Penn State lacrosse can be as well. So, you know, obviously, it will be, I'm not going to be too upset about Hofstra being ranked second behind Penn State. I'm not going to be too mad about that. And I don't think uh, Coach Seth Tierney or, or Ryan Tierney or any of the guys that were on that that team, Josh Burns, I don't think any of them were upset by the fact that they, they didn't get ranked uh, first in the nation. Because just being second was truly incredible. But you don't hear about that kind of stuff. You don't hear about it because it, it seems like that all everyone cares about is college basketball and college football. And that's that's really a shame. It really is. And I hope I hope it does get fixed eventually. I hope that people really do appreciate more sports than just basketball and football you know because I, I think we can all get really passionate about a sport like soccer or lacrosse or baseball or softball even when I was at Hofstra you, you know softball was really big but I feel like that baseball uh, basketball and football kind of take away from those sports and it's such a shame it really is. 
So my hope is that one day, you know, these these college sports that don't get the attention that football or basketball get eventually do get it. But we'll see what happens. I'm very doubtful on it. What's up, Eric boy? How you doing? Just talking about uh, my Hofstra Pride sports and the fact that the men's and women's soccer team just just became uh, conference champions. So now they're they're both on to the NCAA tournament. So really good, really good for them. I was just offering my congratulations to them on on amazing uh, uh, accomplishment. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Again, congratulations to Hofstra. Hofstra men's and women's soccer both did a fantastic job this season and both walked away with a conference championship. You know, congrats to both and best of luck in the NCAA tournament, really. Uh, so what else? I, 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 I know it's Monday, so this is usually the this is usually about the point where I go ahead on my rant on the New York Jets and everything. And believe me, I have a rant of epic proportions for the Jets, especially after this past weekend. But I don't want to be that angry so, you know, so early on into a stream. That's why I started out with all the stuff about Hofstra and, and, and all that. Because I wanted to begin on a positive note before everything just turned salty. You know, man can only take so much losing. But I'm going to save it. I'm gonna save it because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go on a rant, it, it, it's gonna be it, it's gonna be at a point where all the positive vibes are out and it's time to just go on a rant. <laughs> it, it's just too easy to go on a rant against the Jets. It really is. But anyway, uh, just a couple things. A uh, couple things I want to clean up first. Uh, first of all, thank you to Chowderhead2 and MTV Money for following me over the weekend. I appreciate that. I, I, of course, um, these guys are uh, what a Chowderhead is a affiliate, so uh, he's doing his thing. I think uh, when I was just in the stream a little while ago, and he was streaming streaming Halo Infinite. Uh, the other one, MTV Money, she's uh, she's trying to become an affiliate. Uh, she's struggling a little bit in terms of viewer counts. I'm trying to do all that I can, uh, but with work and everything, there's really not much I can do. So if you guys go check them out, they're a lot of fun. They're really cool guests. And actually, I learned something from Chowderhead about this about this game that I didn't know before. I did not know that batters had tendencies, like pull versus push, and that if you play up to their tendencies, Eric Boy, I could talk about the, well, actually, I can't really talk about the Packers, because uh, I just don't know enough about uh, the Packers or the Seahawks, other than freaking Jamal Adams handled his situation wrong, I believe, with the New York Jets. But with that being said, he's the one that's on a that's on a playoff contender in Seattle instead of being on the Jets who haven't had a winning record since twenty fifteen. So I I, I you know Again, good for good for the Packers for picking up that win against Seattle. It seems like to me, I, I mean, this just might be. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that the Packers shut them out seventeen to nothing. I saw that, 
but it just seems like to me that the Seahawks been uh, have been on a slippery slope since they lost Russell Wilson. And that's not really a good thing if you're going to lose someone of that caliber. You don't, like, there, the backup plan was Geno Smith. As a Jets fan, I can tell you that's not a great backup plan. That is not a good backup backup plan. So Seattle needs to figure something out because Geno Smith is not the answer to their prayers. It's certainly an answer to my prayers as a Jets fan because let's keep in mind that we tr that the Seahawks traded away the their first round pick, I think for the 2022 NFL draft, just so they can get Jamal Adams. Which in turn was actually a bright idea by Joe Douglas to do that. You know, I mean, you got rid of Jamal Adams, who made it clear he didn't want to be on the Jets anymore, and you got a first round pick out of it. Fucking awesome. Especially the way that they're playing right now, the way they're losing. Woo Man, let's get that up into the top ten. But the Jets have two top, uh, two first round top 10 draft picks heading into 2022 NFL Draft. Assuming Joe Douglas and Robert Sala still are in their positions. Again, gonna get there. Just not there quite yet. Not there. Not there at all. Um, so... I'm not rooting, I'm not going to root for a team to do badly because I want a first round pick or I want an extra first round pick. There's no guarantee that the first round picks are ever going to work out. I mean, look at Sam Darnold. No offense to him, but he didn't work out with the Jets. He ended up getting traded to Carolina and now Carolina Get back Cam Newton, all of a sudden he's Superman again! Yeah, that's not gonna last long. I can tell you that Cam Newton is not gonna be. His, his welcome is not gonna be for long in Carolina. Or his hero's welcome is not gonna be very long in Carolina. I don't I don't see it going going beyond. I, I think Whatever. He had his he had his game, two touchdowns, congratulations. Uh yeah, good luck trying to repeat that next week. Oh, and by the way, you you still got a division that that has Tom Brady in it. And take it from a Jets fan, that's not easy. So overhyped Cam Newton, whatever. Oh my god, how is that not a home run? <laughs> God damn. Mm, sorry, it's just my dad's my dad's cooking um uh, cook uh, baking in the oven. God damn, the fumes are coming up here into my room and everything, making it really hard to breathe. God, it's like I'm breathing in charcoal or whatever. There we go. There's the home run. See, I uh, I can at least appreciate the. Uh, the a home run, a, a moment to get a home run with this Robin Yount card. I do not appreciate it if it's with that bronze Robin Yount card because I can tell you that's going to be frustrating like hell. And I don't believe that's the mission. Okay. Yeah, no, they want, they want, um, Extra base hits with Robin Young, so we're gonna we're gonna play in Coors Field for that, and then home runs with shortstops. I think I could do that. Yeah, he, I I mean I'm hopeful it's not gonna take me two hours. I because uh, that scout card um didn't that sh that didn't take me long. That only took me like an hour and a half. But I don't want to. I don't want it to be too short to the point where 
you know, I finished this up in an hour and a half like I did with Scott. Because the reality is, I have no plan after after I do this Robin Yao card. I guess what I could do is just continue on with the with the Run It Back program because now I have a majority of the cards that I need in order to get to um, in order to get to uh, get to the Run It Back program. But we'll see. Uh, do I owe you a game? I, I thought I gave you. I thought I gave you a game. Or I. Uh, I. Okay, I don't owe you a game, but I'm guessing you're gonna redeem one. Again, I, I really need to make that much higher. I need to make it like fifteen hundred or two thousand. Not not saying I don't appreciate playing against viewers and everything. I'm not saying that at all. But if I have to rely on viewers to be able to buy time so that I'm not sh so that I'm streaming for a few, uh, for three hours, that's kind of a problem. So, yeah, it, it, if you want to play me, play me, Eric boy. I'm not saying don't do it. If you want, if you want to play me, play me, and we'll play a game. That home run went to such a waste, too. Like, all I needed was a double. Not shortstop. But of course, the game doesn't want to give it to me. Actually, what what is um? What are his tendencies in terms of? I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm just trying to player Kirk's pitching breakdown. Because what I was trying to say earlier, uh, I, I didn't really finish the thought, was that Chowder, when I was in Chowderhead's um, stream, he was talking to me about players' tendencies, specifically batters' tendencies. And apparently, if you, if you play up to their tendencies, they're going to hit well for you. So if they're a pull hitter, if you swing early, you're going to get some really good results. Whereas if they're put, if they're more push, then you gotta, uh, then you do late swings, and all of a sudden, you know that uh, that's gonna work out for you as well. I did not know that about MLB The Show 21. I didn't know that, and I'm kind of glad that Chowda, um, <laughs> uh, get, God damn it. I need a gas mask. But I didn't know this up until Chowda told me, so again, I really appreciate his help with that. Because I might actually try that online and see how that works for me. You know, I honestly didn't think there was any strategy when it came to online play. Everyone's just like, well, the strategy is throw gas and try to swing early so that you can pull balls over the wall and everything. But apparently there's more of a strategy to it than I am than I initially thought. And I didn't know that. So that's why I'm trying to figure out like what the tendencies are for someone like Robin Young. Okay, so I don't know. I, I forget how to pull up tendencies. Maybe if Chowda comes in here later, um, I can ask him. Because I think it's important that you guys learn about it as it was for me to learn about it. So if he comes in here later, I'll t I'll ask him, and he'll tell me. Hopefully, maybe. There we go. There's the extra base hit that I needed. 
If I could choose any team in the MLB that would be my favorite team, who would it be? No Mets? The Red Sox. You know, I grew up uh, I grew up watching uh, Fever Pitch. I know that sounds cheesy, but there was a point in my life where I had no gaming console. So, basically, uh, all I had really was a DVD player. And so, my, uh, so I had Fever Pitch, or, and I just watched that movie cons constantly. Constantly. So, Red Sox are my, are my second favorite team. Oh, look at that. We already finished up on the, on that. Okay, so... Then we just need to do the home runs with the short stops and the extra base hits with the out. Okay, before I do that, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see what his position is because sometimes they're not they're not in the positions that you think they're in. Okay, he is a second base or a shortstop. All right. Uh, which I'm gonna leave that alone, obviously. And this was my lineup in terms of the run it back cycle. Uh, you know, I've got Jason Hayward, Edwin Encarnacion, no Nolan Gorman, Kiebert Ruiz. Andrew T. Simmons and Don Mattingly, as well as Terry Scoobel uh, in the rotation, as well as Steve Shishek and Hudson Street in um, in the bullpen. So I don't know if I really want to fuck around with this lineup, but I don't want to fuck around with that lineup either, and nor do I want to do it with my main one. Can I create another one? Okay, this looks good. So we'll do this. I'm going to delete this uh, this lineup as soon as I'm done here. So don't think that uh, don't believe that this is going to be permanent because it's not going to be permanent. Seeger, he could play at third. No, I don't want Taylor. Bias, he can play center, so I might want to hold on to him there. Wagner can play first or left. Uh, I don't know why I was checking out Soriano. Anderson can play second or third. I'll tell you what. We're going to move... We're going to move Seeger over to third... Bias can play second. Sure. Wagner can play left. Again, I'm just trying to build a lineup of short stops here. Edmonds is second baseman, so that's a no-go. I think Biggio is also second base. Yeah, he's second, so no go on him either. But Trey Turner might actually work. Now let's see who we can put in right. Hampson Center. Ricardo's, yeah. Joey Wendell, no, he's third. No, not Brandon Belt. Oh, Brock? No. no. No, 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 not Brock. Whit Merrifield is second, so... This is the problem. This is... 
This is why I don't like doing secondary positions because now you're looking through this lineup, trying to build this team, and you have no idea who's going to be able to play what position. I, I, I just, I can't stand this. Oh, we can do Tatis. There we go. That'll work. Thank you. All right. Uh, what else? First base, we can go with... Nope, not him. He's catcher, so that won't work. Sakas is thirds. That won't work either. Jesus Christ! Connor Joe, no, he's left. Brad Miller can play a lot of different positions, but he can't play. But he's not a shortstop. Neither is Lowry. Did you go second base, I believe? Come on. Dude, where are all the shortstops? Wait. Hold on here. There we go. Yes, I will take Nico. I don't care. I just need Nico in there. So this is how we're going to do it. First of all, Robin Yao needs to be leadoff. He needs to get extra base hits, so he's got to be there. Uh... Honest, he's going to... Oh, I forgot about catcher. Fuck me. What shortstop plays catcher? Who's my favorite base, uh, favorite player in baseball? Uh, do you mean currently or in uh, like all time? Because I have two different answers for that. Famer? Uh, all time? It's. Uh, oh. Anyone in MLB the show 21. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you meant Farmer. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric Boy. Yeah, Farmer. That works. That's all I need. Um, so. <coughs> oh, the 94 overall. Anyone in MLB the show 21? Check up the Grob. Easily one of my one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite cards. Although that trait that trait Turner card right there, uh, that one was actually actually played beyond his capabilities. Like I think he's severely underrated in terms of power, and he hits bombs for me. It's like incredible. So Trey Turner is close, but. Um, but definitely, uh, Jacob DeGrom for sure. He's your favorite? Oh, that's cool. T uh, him or Bellinger? Uh, are you talking about the one that's... Are you talking about the one that's the Battle Royale reward? The one that's, uh, the flashback to his Rookie of the Year card? Is that the one you're referring to? Cause that's a real. That looks like a really awesome card, or maybe it's not his rookie year, but yeah, the '99. I thought so, but I didn't want to assume anything because you might like his live series diamond one, and I just didn't want to assume. But I appreciate you being in here, uh, uh, Blake. I appreciate it. I see that you are you a streamer as well. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm just. I'm a very fast talker. 
Do you also stream MLB The Show 21? Batting third, the center fielder, number seven, Trey Oh, you bought. Oh, you bought him. Okay. I mean, hey, whatever works. You do stream MLB. All right, cool, man. What's your What's your focus in terms of uh, the show? Like, do you try to do mostly o online stuff, like the Battle Royale program, the ranked seasons, the events, or do you focus more offline? So the player programs. Any programs, conquest maps, that kind of stuff. I ask because I'm like, I'm interested to see what other people uh, stream. 12 and 0 and get the World Series. Nice. So you've done it before. Awesome, man. I wish I could go. I wish I could get to World Series, but I can't. Because I just, I just stink online. I really do. Oh, you're nine and oh. Oh, the best that I ever went in terms of a battle royale run was seven and oh. I want to say maybe I went eight and oh, but I think it's seven, seven oh, the seven and oh was the best that I went. Um, I ended up facing off against a World Series player, and yeah, I mean, look, I'm not uh, overall. I'm actually enjoying the. VR program a lot more this year than I did last year. I mean, obviously the program was a very nice addition to it, but that gives me more of a reason to go ahead and play the game or play that mode. It's not really a bad mode. It's a great mode. It's just if you expect if you expect people like me to go 12 and 0, you're nuts. You like how we get four diamonds? Um, four diamonds. I know you get. I know if you go nine and zero. Oh, if you get nine wins, you get a low. You get a mid eighties, mid to mid to high eighties diamond, and then you get, and then at twelve, if you get to twelve wins. Then you get a 90 plus diamond. Oh, you're talking about, oh, drafting. Oh, I see. Actually, hold on. Let me do something real quick because I'm not, I'm not putting uh, Nate Pearson. I'm not doing Nate Pearson dirty like that. I'm not giving him wins because I'm a because I'm a dick, or because I'm gonna quit, or I'm not giving him losses. Parallel. Yeah, I, I mean, dude, he's an insane card. Even even without him at parallel five, he's such a good card. He really is. I just I've got him to parallel five, so there's really no incentive. For me to continue using him because like I said I don't go online and I'd rather just keep grinding to make all the other shortstops and players uh, parallel five super fractured in fact one uh, a series that I do on YouTube if you want to go check out my YouTube channel I'll do the command real quick here uh, sometimes I'll stream uh, a super fractor team build with the New York Mets and you saw if you were in here a little bit earlier there was a I had a lineup that was filled with Mets players past and present you're waiting for 99 Tatis finest dude that card's gonna be so lit it, it really is I'm I have very high expectations for that card I, I have no idea who would be for the Mets though because it can't be Jacob DeGrom. He's already got a 99. And it can't be Pete Alonso either because he's already got a 99. So I, I, I honestly have no clue as to who it could possibly be for, for the Mets. 
I'm sure I'll either find out this week or I'll find out on Friday. But that 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 finest card that I eventually pick up from the Mets is gonna be the first one. You think bias or Lindor? I can see it. Um but like the thing with Lindor is he didn't really have a good year by the Mets. I mean he just struggled offensively. He was great in the field, but he was he was not great offensively. At least not what I think a lot of Met fans were hoping for from him. I, I could see bias, but is he, like, do you really give it to a guy who just got traded to the Mets? He had a, fa a fantastic um, second uh, or half of the uh, season once he got traded to the Mets. But I don't know if that's enough for them to give him a finest card. I, I just don't know. You ready for it? I got like five. What do you mean five Joey Gallows? What, what do you mean? The roster update already happened. There's, there's no more roster updates for the rest of the season. Next time we'll get one is going to be in MLB The Show 22. So I, I don't understand why you have more more um, Joey Gallows. You know what? I don't care. I'm already I'm already screwed at this point. Oh my god! Do you guys believe this? Oh, you mean for the... Oh, okay, I see. I'm sorry, it didn't click in my mind that you're uh, you're talking about exchanges because I don't do the exchanges. I, I just... I'd rather sell those cards and build up my sub count than I would be of um, exchanging them. You know, I can always play the showdown. I can always do the conquest. I can always do the missions. I feel like that's not... That's not going to be an issue with Team Affinity 5. I mean, it hasn't been for 1 through 4. I don't expect it to be for the 5th one. But hey, if you want to do exchanges, who am I to tell you that you can? So if you think that's that's the way you're going to complete them, by all means, go for, uh, go for it. All right, all right, Eric boy, all uh, all you man. Like I said, I'm not gonna tell you how to how to do things. I can only just show you how it is that I do it. Kyle's lightning card, yeah. Well, just ask ask Eric boy here. He uses he used Kyle Schwarber as um as his catcher for a while. It was parallel five. That, that card's a friggin' beast, man. It's a friggin' beast. I think definitely worth getting him up to parallel five. I can tell you, I can tell you that I don't believe uh, someone like Byron Buxton, the one, uh, the monthly awards card from. April was the was the right move, or was a it was a card worth getting to ninety nine, uh, or parallel five? It just just buy the top snow cards. Why? Why? Why do you not have the? Why not just do the moments and why not just do it there? Well, I do. I believe I do too, Eric. But for me personally, I never thought Buxton was that good. You did the moments to get Chipper. Oh, I see. So you got the cards, sold them in order to buy the live series card for Chipper. 
Oh, he sucked? Oh, well, then. There you go, uh, Blake. I'm sorry that my friend here is giving a bad review on Eric Schwarber. Oh, Byron Buxton. Oh, well then, I'm glad that we're in agreement on that. I just, I, I don't know. I don't think he has the power. I, I think he's great with contact and everything, but this game, it's all about the power. Not to mention, if you... Not to mention, if you're... Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I lost my trail of thought for a second, but I've got it now. Yeah, his power is bad. And there are so many better options. Willie Mays has better power than freaking Byron Buxton. So you could tell me, so you're telling me I could have just gotten, I, I, I could have just waited till the end of the year, till the eighth inning to get Willie Mays, and that's all I really needed. I don't think Trout's bad. Uh, I just, I have really bad feelings about him because Last year when I got his 99 overall, that was like the big collection reward, I was left very disappointed. You have eight home runs with Buxton that is set for out of 209 at-bats. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about the. Uh, yeah, that is pretty bad. The left fielder, Thomas Wagner. I guess it's just a matter of, you know, how do you... 49 hits. Oh, shit. Not even that good. And you say you had a what? A 258 average? Ugh. That's not good. I, you know what? Let me... Before I continue on here... Before I continue on, since uh, since I'm on this, let me check out let me check out Byron Bucks and what I have for him. Where is he? There he is. Okay, so I don't have him at parallel five. Yeah, I'm like still four thousand over forty two hundred away, or just under forty two hundred away. But yeah, just. I just lost interest in him. He just, he didn't, for me personally, he just didn't do well. Like if I go to uh, online wise, you you can tell right there. 31 hits in 142 plate appearances, a 226 batting average with an OP, uh, OPP of 254 and a slugging of 474. Th this is bad. Yeah, well, at the beginning of the year, and then, I mean, he did much better for me offline. Like, you can see he's got 59 hits. Uh, I, I can't even see the number of home runs here. I, I wish I could, but I, I'm, I'm obviously blocking it. But you can see, like, the batting average, 415, 428, slugging what, over 1,000, and and an OPS of 1.47, you know, that's good. But he just didn't work out for me online. Trey Turner, uh, what do I have with him? Online-wise, I mean, Trey Turner I didn't even do well with online-wise either. A 217 batting average, that's even worse than Byron Buxton. And a 710 OPS... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I thought I did a lot better with Trey Turner than the stats are indicating here. I mean, obviously, against CPU, he was way, way better. But that's every single card. Uh, give me one second, Eric Boy. Uh, let me do one more half inning, uh, half inning against the Rockies just to see if I can get a home run. Um, if not, then I'll play you. Not with the lineup that I currently have.
Not not that lineup. We I'm I am not doing that lineup. You will get my God Squad. Well, whatever my God Squad, is, uh, whatever my God Squad is. <laughs> This Robin Yao card is going to be hella difficult to get these extra base hits. Okay, man. I look forward to seeing it. There we go. There's the home run that I needed with the shortstop. So I don't need to hit any more home runs. I just need to get the extra base hits with uh, Robin Yao. Which is unfortunately going to be very, very very difficult. Alright, let me go change to my God Squad for a minute here. Main lineup, whatever you want to call it. Thank you for the follow, by the way, uh, TV Blake. I, I know that my thing isn't uh, appearing here, because I, I stream straight from my console. I, I stream straight I stream straight from my PS5, so. Yeah, I don't have the whole Streamlabs thing or anything like that. I, um, I, I, I do, I, I do want to do that, and some people have told me, Oh, thank you. I appreciate that as well. Yeah, the great thing about um, the uh, my YouTube channel is you could go all the way back to the beginning. When I first started uh, streaming MLB The Show 21, you could literally go right to that episode. Yeah, but please feel free to check it out and just see... How far I've come in the in this uh, in this Diamond Dynasty grind. Yeah, you too, man. I mean, you're probably not going to need it because you're probably going to beat me. But hey, let's make it a. I have exams for school, so I can't play till December 1st. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. But yeah, go, go check out my YouTube channel. It's, it's really cool. You know, I, I mean, that one, that first episode that I'm talking about that has like over 10,000 views. It's, it, it's insane. And several of my other videos also have over a thousand. And in fact, I start, uh, you know, I'm talking about that Mets uh, Super Fractor lineup build. You know, that's also on YouTube as well. It's actually separate from the Diamond Dynasty series. One time you played BR till the seventh inning. Uh, that game that I was talking about when I did when I uh, with BR that I went up against that World Series player, I think we took it to either the sixth or the seventh inning, and then finally he cracked through. But what was really cool was that I was uh, streaming at the time because I was working on the program and. Um, he came in and he said, you know, he really wanted to see me. He really wanted to see me do. Oh, that's not what I want. What the hell? Anyway, um, so he, what was really cool was that he came into my stream. It was like he wanted to see me do well, but he had to get the win. And I was like, it's all good. So good. I'm not worried about trying to go 12 and 0. I mean, I'd be honestly blessed if that were to happen. But the reality is that 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 7 and 0 or 8 and 0 grind that I did, that's about the closest that I'll come to being 12 and 0. 
still, that's not going to deter me from playing BR. The only thing that's keeping me is that, for one thing, it's very expensive, or, or it, it, the buy-in is, you know, a 1500 Which, I mean, it's not all that bad, but... I, I really don't want to spend the money, especially if there's going to be another Mets player that comes out on ranked seasons like they did with um, with Billy Wagner. And I'm forced into a position where I have to pay for the, or I have to buy, buy him. Strike three, sit down. So that's the only reason I'm keeping my sub count high. Uh, it's actually at like 140, uh, one, or 1 million 495,000 or something like that. I have to go back and look. <laughs> God, these fumes. God damn. I have a feeling this Robin Yount card is not going to take me, uh, or, or this Robin Yount Evolution program is not going to take me all of, all, uh, well, it's not going to, what's the word, it's probably going to take me a lot longer than one, uh, than an hour and a half to get that done. Because it, the fact is that right now I don't have any, I, I don't have any extra base hits with him. And it's very difficult to have one. I don't even know how I did it in the first moment. I really don't. Yeah, I know. Look, dude, I, I have some really bad tendencies when it comes to swinging at pitches. I'm trying to get better, but I didn't, my tendencies are still there. I deserve to be struck out there. <laughs> Come on, Nate. Unfortunately, Nate hasn't been that pitcher that he was last year. I think he's still a solid pitcher, but I, I don't know. I'm not getting the feeling that he's giving or he's as fast as he was last year. He also doesn't have a sinker, so that kind of plays into it as well. Sit down. So, uh, should I do my Jets rant now, or should I just wait? Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll I'll wait till after this. Uh... How is he safe? 
explain that one to me. How is he safe? Yeah, so me and Eric Boy right now we're we're um we're doing a viewer game, so But I wanna know how it is that he was called safe on that. No, it's not honestly the worst thing in the world if I were to walk. Uh, so TV Blake, just redeem, uh, just get like one, one thousand um, channel reward points, and you'll get to play me. Ah, shit. Okay, so then. Give it a little while and you'll be able to play me. Because you, you don't forget there you get um You get plus 50 every now and then, not to mention tw uh, 10 or 12 channel rewards for every <clears throat> 10 minutes you watch me or whatever. So, um, I believe that's how it works on, on Twitch. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Not entirely, but no, I have cross play on. So if you're, if you're on Xbox, I can play you. Oh, PS4? Uh, I... I think you should still be able to. I don't see why not. Okay. All right, man. You do what you gotta do. Batting seven. The white field. Aaron. I'm getting such good contact on these on these hits and yet <coughs> not happening. Oh my jerseys all thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um I did this based off of my um my alma mater. So I went to Hofstra University out on Long Island and while I couldn't replicate their jerseys, I was I was able to do like my own spin of it. Because the logos that are on our caps are not uh, the logo uh, the Hofstra Pride logo. I just couldn't figure out how it was that I could get that logo onto the caps. I was just having trouble and it frustrated me to the point where I was like, forget it. I'll just I'll just do my own thing. I'm probably gonna go with the Hopster Pride for like another year and then I'm gonna move I'm gonna move to do a different team. It, it, it's and the funny thing is the Hopster Pride weren't even my uh, this isn't the team that I started playing Diamond Dynasty with. When I started uh, playing Diamond Dynasty on my um, on my PlayStation 4, 
it was MLB The Show 15, and, or MLB 15 The Show, excuse me. And we were actually called the New Jersey Thunder, so if you're like a Yankees fan or whatever, you'll know that the Trenton Thunder play, <clears throat> are an affiliate team of the, of the Yankees. And the idea for, from my perspective was, okay, well, what if, what if Trenton decided to go professional? What if they wanted to be a major league baseball team? So I did that for a couple years. I want to say from 15 up until 18. And then I moved on to the Hofstra Pride. Ah, shit. You've been playing since MLB 16 this show? Yeah, that, that was definitely the game that I really got into the show. Yeah, no doubt about that. That was crushed. And it was too easy, too. It was a fastball right over the middle. Look, I, 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 I've said this before and I will say it again. I never made a claim that I was the greatest online player of all time. In fact, I'm actually one of the worst. I, I, I hate playing online. I think it's a waste of time and I'd rather focus on offline. So, you know, I, I don't want people to get the impression that I'm trying to make myself to be a great online player. No, 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 no. No, I know I'm terrible. I just want to give you guys the chance to be able to play me. Is my favorite team the Mets? Yes. Yes, I have been a Mets fan since 2001 or two. So I've been through 20 years of heartbreak. But I was not, I did not watch the Mets in 2000, so I wasn't old enough to understand that at the time. Yeah, I know, Eric Boy. The the PCI flyouts they just make no sense. They it's clear that they uh, this game values either being late or early more than being. Good or perfect, perfect. Like, it, it, like that, for example. I mean, maybe not the greatest example, but I'm just saying that was a good, good. Uh, that was a good, good with PCI on the plate and the. And the response was. I get a fly out. So, yeah. Th I've been saying this over and over. This this game screws you. Really does. Yeah, I, I think in the later years, like MLB The Show 18, uh, you know, that that really valued um, playing offline more. But obviously, once VR happened and ranked seasons and everything, once they started doing that, that's where MLB The Show really started to focus more online. And I'm not complaining about it. It's just clearly not a mode for me. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, VR, it's been fine-tuned to, to be more for players like me so that I don't have to grind to be 12-0 and 0 in order to get the best cards. No, I can just do a program and consider that. Or consider that good enough. 
Your highest rank was 700? Nice, man. Last year, I, last year I got up to 700. And t uh, I think I got up to wild card in terms of ranked seasons ratings. But this year, I haven't even made it past pennant. Or if I wasn't, uh, I made it to pennant, and then I started struggling from there. Dude, you don't have to tell me. If I'm struggling on on All Star, I'm sure Legend's gonna be a straight up pain in the ass for me. Eight sixteen, very nice, Eric. Yeah, I, you've got the championship series. Um. Thing as your icon, so nah, nah. I'm not those. I'm not that player. I'm not that type of player, TV Blake. And even if people do it to me, like I, I the uh, the way I respond is I just pelt them. I don't even like. I just show them, hey, asshole, don't do that again. It doesn't matter because they do it again anyway, but. First time playing this season, wow. You might actually like my friend Chowda if he ever comes in here. Once someone does it to me, I just score, uh, I just score 10 runs. Wow. That's the ultimate karma. Third baseman, number three, Evan. Longhorn. Well, you did replay. You did replay, or. Did I replay? Did you replay or did I replay um, that Schwarber home run? So maybe that's actually a good sign for me. And I've already got a home run to, to boot. He replayed? I mean, I don't know. I had my controller on my... I sat it on my lap for a minute. It might have accidentally it just tapped right trigger so I, I don't know I don't want to accuse anyone of uh of reef of being a dick your attention please now coming in the oh fuck it I wasn't I probably wasn't gonna win anyway uh Cameron's you uh, if there's a channel reward for this, so uh, you would have to be a you would have to earn channel rewards, and then you would have to accumulate enough to be able to challenge me. I only do that just to keep it fair. So if you follow me, you get an immediate three hundred uh, right off the bat. Then as long as you just stay in my stream and um, watch me I mean you'll get bonuses of 50 from time to time so you'll get you'll get up there fairly quickly think your highest game scored was 21 to 15 holy shit that was a barn burner oh, or that's a uh, that's a real high scoring game man incredible that's a strikeout There's no way that should have been a strikeout. We were playing at ship itself. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that that, that definitely helps. Um, now 
all coming in the big shit. It is what it is, Eric boy. Okay. At the end of the day, I came, I came close, and I was in position. And if I didn't, you know, if I if I didn't get myself into a two strike count, that wouldn't have been a conversation. I mean, I would have been upset that that would have been a strike, but I wouldn't be as upset about it if I wasn't in a in a two strike count. So. Look, Eric, boy, you can curse in my stream. I, I don't care. I'm not going to censor anyone. So if you want to say ass, just say ass. I'm actually inclined to agree, because this game... It can be rather unfair. Really can be. But I love the show! Been playing it since uh, MLB 15. Actually, it goes even beyond MLB 15. The show I have all the I have all the MLB the shows going back to 06. Uh, are you gonna get MLB? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna get it, Cameron. So there's no doubt about that. I will get it. But obviously it's not, it, it hasn't even played, um, it hasn't been released yet, so. Or it hasn't even, it's not even been marketed yet towards. As something you can pre-order, so. That might come later on in once as we get closer to March or whatever, then we might see, then we'll get a pre-order. You play 13? I mean, look, I haven't touched the MLB The Shows on my PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3. Like, I, I haven't touched them for a long time. You know, when I go on my PS2, I'm thinking about other games. I'm thinking about MVP Baseball or uh, uh, MVP Baseball 2005 or ESPN NFL 2K5 or NCAA Football 09. You know, I'm not really playing MLB the show. Uh, 360. Wait a minute. The, MLB the show hasn't been on 360. Unless you're saying 2K13, unless that's what you mean. Have I played Little League as a kid, or do I just like to watch it? I I did play Little League as a as a kid, but it wasn't like what they do on ESPN. If that's what you're asking, no, I just played in town. Uh, I watch it if if New Jersey's in the in the tournament. If New Jersey has a has a team in the tournament, then um, then I'll be watching. But if not, then I'm not really too worried about it. Yeah, just something for me as a kid to do when I was growing up. You know, I did I I did soccer, I did basketball, and I did baseball when I was younger. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, in town is what is what we called it. We called it in town because it was just kids from my community. Eric boy, let me tell you something. You got you got that strike three in the in the fourth inning. I think I at least deserve a a strike that was called a ball. But yeah, Cameron, that's that's what I played. No, I did not. Nope. 
All right, whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend time arguing over this. It, it is what it is. I have it as perfect, so I don't know why this umpire is such an asshole right now and making incorrect pitch uh, pitch calls. It should be at perfect. Juan Rivera must be behind the home plate. So. Joe West, sure, him too. Wait, isn't Joe West one of the generic uh, umpires? Like the ones that you would see if you played franchise mode or Road to the Show or whatever? Or is he a real life umpire? Angel Hernandez, what did I say? Juan, uh, Juan Rivera or something? Uh, Juan Hernandez? What did I say? Sorry about that. Sometimes, like, I uh, I don't even catch what I say sometimes. So I apologize about that if I got it if I got it wrong. Yeah, but Angel Hernandez must be behind the plate. Yes. I, I did I got both supposedly in my last in my last stream. Uh, so if you wanna go check that out, you certainly can. Uh, I recommend the YouTube version of uh Buster Posey because that one's a little more edited down. Because I uh, like in in the middle of the stream if the game froze on me, so there's two parts to that stream. If you go on YouTube, it, it, it looks better. Come on, Votto. I mean, maybe if I get some time later, maybe I'll do like a Giants team build super fractured thing. But right now I'm kind of focused on the Mets. So, and I really don't like Buster Posey swing anyway. I, I, I just, I struggled with it in the moments. So I, I'm not too eager to bring him, to bring him be, uh, to my God Squad. Plus, I still have Mike Piazza waiting on the bench, ready to, or not on the bench, but in my collection, to um, to put him in because he's he's got like parallel parallel three, so I want to get Mike up to parallel five. Make him the only player that I have. I have paralleled twice. His ninety, excuse me, his ninety-one overall version from the first inning, and his ninety-nine overall version from from the Field of Dreams uh, pack. I don't think it's his stance. I just don't think it's. I, I just. I'm not a big fan of his swing. I guess. All right, GG, uh, Eric. Good game. Yeah, that too. 14 speed. Ugh. Yeah, I think you can you can equal a, like JT Real Muto, this card that I'm using from the All-Star pack. I think that's just as effective of, as Buster Posey. I mean, Buster may have more power, but Yeah, I I know. I know. TV Blake, I know. Yeah, so you can see here, Mike Piazza is a parallel three. I mean, I want to get him up to, I want to get him up to uh, parallel four, and then 
eventually super fractured. It's very frustrating. It, it, believe me, it is. What other what other catchers was I dealing with? Oh, whoops. Yeah, it does take a while. That's that's why I'm saying with my Mets team build, it's gonna it, you know, like look at this. The closest guy that I have to super fractured is Jacob Degrom, and the next time that I stream uh, this team build. It's going to be, it's likely when DeGrom becomes super fractured. So, but I do have a couple other Mets here that you can see I have them super fractured. I said, I mentioned Mike Piazza, Pete, uh, Pete Alonso is also super fractured, as is Dom Smith. And they're not the only ones either, guys. I have a ton more of of parallel uh, or super fractured. I do not no Schwarber. I have any. Uh, I only have him at tier one. I only have Schwarber at tier one because I'm right now. I'm focusing on Tyler O'Neill. And I don't know who I would do after this. I might I might do Jason Bay because I'm kind of close on him getting him super fractured. But I don't know yet. There you go. Good. Yeah, the, the team builds, especially at the end of the year, are really good to do. So if you're looking for stuff to do, Super fract uh, team builds, especially with super fractured players, are definitely a good way to go. All right, now I gotta get to uh, I gotta do um, the extra base hit with with um, Robin Yao. So once I do that, then this. Uh, then this is... Uh, yeah. Or this evolution program is done. And what I might do to kill, uh, to kill a little bit more time is just to... Got the 99 Lind... What 99 Lindor? Lindor's not 99. Are you talking about the 96 or the 97 Lindor? Yeah, Vlad Jr., the monthly awards one. Yeah, the signature one. That's what I thought. Hold on. Oh, wait, when did he become a 99? No, I, I thought he was a 97 or a 96. Okay, well, Lindor is a 99. And Justin Verlander is also a well. I knew he was a ninety nine. I just didn't know that Lindor was a ninety nine. Yeah, I mean Lindor's definitely one of those cards that, uh, that I would have liked to have bought. But I'm also interested in, um. In uh, Justin Verlander as well, and he's like 500k. All right, Eric boy, I appreciate the game. So I might be on. Uh, I might still be on by the time you come back, especially if this is going to take me a while, which I expect it to be uh, to take me a while. <laughs>
considering I have no extra base hits with Robin Yao right now, and it doesn't look like I'm going to start. <coughs> Excuse me. Breathing in those, uh, those fumes again. That can't be too good for my lungs. All right. I, uh, this is unfortunately going to be the running trend, guys, where I'm basically going to quit every time I do my at-bat with Robin Yao. It, it's, it's, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but that's the best way that you can, um, you can get these missions done. So, it, uh, well, it's actually the quickest way. I mean, if you want to play a full nine-inning game and try your luck, be my guest, but that's going to take a while. Uh, a nine-inning game on play versus CPU takes me at least 40 minutes. Well, Camerons, I was saying that I want Justin Verlander. I want to, I want to buy him, but I don't have him yet. I am entirely cheap when it comes to my sub count. And actually, I mentioned before that I thought I had like 1.495 million subs. I actually have only 1.478 million. So my sub count was off by like 17,000. I, I know, but I am insanely cheap. I am insanely cheap. And also, is it like, am I hurting for Verlander? Like, if I don't get him, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, lose my mind or whatever? No, there's no pressure on me to go get Verlander now. I'll do it eventually, but I'm not going to do it, you know, right, right now. Oh, my God, Robin. Can you just hit a fucking extra base hit already? Jesus Christ. Yeah, basically. I do all the player programs, all the conquest maps and everything, and I save up my subs, but I don't spend it. Because I'm my biggest fear is that there's gonna be a player from the Mets that comes out in ranked seasons, like how Billy Wagner came out. My that's my biggest fear. So I try to save up my stubs. For when that happens i mean i'm not uh, let me be clear i'm not i i do not buy these guys at a million stubs that's ridiculous obviously i wait for the prices to go down when it gets to like five hundred thousand, that's where i'm comfortable uh where i'm comfortable buying it if they're a mets player i mean last year mike piazza's 99 overall when he was on the Mets in the ranked seasons reward, that cost me the finest Cody Bellinger that I earned through the event. It, it cost me a lot of stubs to get it, but I was determined. I was determined to get it, and I wasn't about to. I wasn't about to let it go through rank seasons and, and and not have the money to be able to get it. Or I wasn't going to go through rank seasons to get it. I may have gotten up to wild card last year, but or divisional series or whatever, but there was no way I was getting up to World Series. Not last year. And there certainly is no way that I am getting up to World Series this year, and I'm certainly not getting 30 wins in one season. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. No luck. No dice. And also, why am I still batting? Why am I batting? Yeah, it is a lot of subs. It is. Believe me. But you have to understand that there were... 
Except Cameron's, I am really, really, really terrible at ranked seasons. I know, I know my current ranked seasons record is twenty-one and fifteen. But let me let me tell you something. Those twenty-one wins must have just been a fluke. And, and here's the other thing, Camerons. It takes me... It, it ta You think it takes me long to do... If you think it takes me long to do play versus CPU games, you ought to see me in ranked. It takes me an hour to do a ranked seasons game. And that's... If I were to do five, that would be five hours that I'm spending... On, on this game, and it's like, I, I really don't have time for that. I have time for three hours, but time for five? Not really. I'm sorry. One ranked seasons game, or one ranked seasons win a day would probably be attainable. But... There are times where I don't get it. Well, that's not what happens with me. Usually I'm on the opposite end of that. I I get struck out and then the guy hits home runs against me left and right. Look, basically what I'm saying is I am terrible at rank seasons. I know I said it three times, but I really am terrible. So I, I wish I could be better, but I'm not. Leading off for the line. The short well, here's the other thing, and here's another thing too, Camerons. I'm one of those guys that doesn't like to quit. I'm one of those guys that likes to see a game through to the end. No matter how bad it gets. And I figure, worst comes to worst, he scores 10 runs on me, I get mercy ruled. But I'm always someone that wants to see a game through. Because it's also about parallel XP as well. You know, you get time and a half. Multi or you get, I'm sorry, not time and a half, but 1.5 multiplier for a ranked seasons game. So you might as well try to take advantage of that as best as you can. So I take it when you face off against me, you, you're going to mercy rule me. I look forward to it. Yeah, well that doesn't happen with me. I'm I'm the opposite. I'm I'm the person that ends up getting ten runs scored against them. I mean look, if you if you guys can help me be a better player, I'm all ears. I really am all ears. The shortstop, Robin Yell. If you start the Grom 100%, but if... Maybe you might not. Well, like, also understand that this is not my lineup. This is not the... I, I'm just doing this because I'm just trying to get Robin Yount's, uh missions done. And I pray to God that there's different there's a different mission that I could do because right now this is this is starting to get on my nerves. Or I could do the exchanges. I guess I could do the exchanges. Um Yeah, you know what? Well, I don't have I don't have Jacob the Grom at 
parallel five. I'll tell you what. I'll throw. I'll throw in uh, one. Uh, do I really want to give up that that quickly? Yeah. Fuck it. I need to get this Robin Yount card. All right, there we go. So Robin Yount in my collection now because I did a, uh, I did the exchange. I, I mean, look that 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 mission is brutal. That is brutal, brutal, brutal. So there we go. There's a. Uh, there's that. All right, let me let me show you what my best lineup would look like. Um, I would probably go with, or actually, so I would probably go with, yeah, get ready for a brawl to, uh, on, on that Cameron's because that, that seriously pissed me off, uh, last Friday and it takes a lot in conquest mode to piss me off. Uh, so I guess I would go with Hank Aaron. Actually, that Tyler O'Neill card might work for now. Uh, I believe, actually, who would I get if I get the inning bosses for the, for the ninth inning? For the ninth inning, I don't think there's any question. I'm going after Babe Ruth. Sorry to Johnny Bench and Eric Gagne, but that big Ruth card, that's a card you don't pass up. Yeah, Camerons, believe me, I face the same frustration with that Umbrella Conquest map. It is... It's very frustrating. Yeah, this is a very good card. This is basically like the Willie Mays card that uh, that I went with in the last sitting program. So you see here, this Willie Mays card is just phenomenal. Oh no, I'm keeping him. I am keeping him. I'm not selling Babe Ruth. You don't sell Babe Ruth. I mean, you can if you want a million stubs or whatever, but you've seen my stub count. Do you think I'm hurting for stubs right now? TV Blake, uh, the contact him... The vision with that PCI huge? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Where are you going to put them? First base, most likely. First base or left field? I don't care. First, ba uh, first base, most likely, because... Um, actually, isn't he a right fielder? What... Let me see where he is. Hold on. Yeah, he's a right fielder. I could actually just put him in right field. I mean, there's nobody really out. I, I mean, this Cassiano's card, this was actually really solid for me, personally. I like this card a lot. But this Cassiano's card, I, I like this one. Mookie's also a great option. Ronald Acuna. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. You guy, Eric Boy will tell, uh, like, he did freaking phenomenal with uh, Vladimir Guerrero. He's got him up over 500. No, Camerons, I don't use, uh, I don't use Mookie right now. Because I'm still working on Judge and Adam Frazier. You have to understand, my God Squad, this is not my God Squad. This is just my squad that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to get parallel to XP. Yeah, but look, uh, but Cameron, so look at, look at where I'm at with, um, or I'm sorry, not Cameron, but Blake. It's, I, I'm basically close with Frazier. Once I'm done with Frazier, he's out. He's out. I'm done with him. So yeah, I could put Mookie there. My God Squad, if I like, if I were to build it, I'll just do the daily. Yes, I do have ninety nine Kershaw. 
So if I were to build it, I have Hank Aaron in left. Uh, whoops. This, this Cedric Mullins card, yes. Uh, that would definitely be in there. Uh, I like Castellanos, so I give him a shot. Yes, I do have 99 Chipper. He's super factored. Uh, that Trey Turner, I would have him there. Second, I don't know who I would have here, honestly. I guess I would have to go with, like, Mookie or Corey. Actually, Seager might be a better option. Yeah, let's try Seager at second. First base, Pete Alonzo. Catcher, uh, Mike Piazza, 99. Uh, then here, Guerrero, Jr. I definitely have Willie Mays. Uh, sure, Mookie. Hold on, I, I'm still building this. And then the Solaire card. And finally, and this might sound strange, but this card has always had a great swing for me personally. No, not that, not that one. This one, Griffey. I've always enjoyed using this Griffey card. I don't know why it's just always been a good card for me. Like you look online, like look at that. A 291 batting average with a 310 OPP and a 723 sluggage. You're looking at over a thousand OPS. So that's why I like that card. In terms of rotation, um, definitely DeGrom, definitely Shohei. Actually, I might switch the two. Yeah, that's true. I should probably do that. Um, I'm not doing Mike Scott. Now, this might be an interesting option, but Bob Gibson would probably be another one because I really enjoy pitching with him. This Logan Webb card as well, and then I'm going to need a lefty. So, But I really don't like Robbie Ray. I don't feel like I can control with him. That, uh, the lefty is kind of a work in progress. Uh, I would leave Mariano Rivera in the bullpen. Billy Wagner, too. Um, Kimbrell has actually really sucked for me, so I don't want to even touch him. Araldis? No, I do not have a Raldis. I don't have the. I don't have that card. Um. Yeah, I think Hater would definitely be an option, but my problem with him. Actually, you know what? Hater looks like a really good option. I know he's only pitched four innings, but his ERA is very low. So yeah, I guess I would go with Hater. And I always love a good side armor. So Tyler Rogers. I'm trying to think who else could I include? Uh, well, I guess I do have Chapman. But that's the that's the live series one. Ew, no, I actually don't want that. Never mind. Brad Brock. Uh, I know you guys might be surprised by this, but Brad Bat, uh, Brad Brock. Excuse me. <laughs> a little bit of a tongue twister there. Has been really good. As has uh, Shishak. Should make a cap pitcher with a glitchy release. 
You're saying Jansen? Um, I don't know how I've done with Jansen. I'm assuming, which one, which Jansen do you mean? Do you mean like, do you mean this one, this Jansen? Or do you mean like get the one from BR? Because the one from BR I don't have. No, actually, funny thing about that, I sold that Jansen card. I sold it to get uh, to get uh, Trout so that I can um, so that I could complete the live series collection. Yeah, Shane Green has been a bit of a struggle. Um, I really do like Edwin Diaz's um, his windup, so I guess he would be in there. And I don't know who I would go. Well, oh wow, I completely forgot about Andrew Miller. Okay, so yeah, that would be about it. Um, that would be my God Squad. Hank Aaron, Cedric Mullins, and Nick Castellanos with Pete Alonso at first, Seeger at second, Trey Turner, uh, Chipper Jones, and Mike Piazza. Obviously, those guys. You should buy better pitchers so you give up less hits. And if a Mets player comes out and you want to sell that pitcher, you want it too. Yeah, I could. I could do that. I just, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really. So this has been a, actually a very interesting God Squad build. I, I didn't think I would be doing that tonight, but okay. <laughs> I'm all for that. Uh, again, the bullpen is a work in progress, but I really do like Shishak. And I like Brad Brock. So those guys, those guys are staying. And uh, the only ones that I have questions about is definitely Kershaw, because I, I just don't know how I would do it get, uh, with him. I wish I, I wish I did. I can tell you how I do with Shohei Otani and Jacob DeGrom. You can see with DeGrom, I'm absolutely horrible, because he's got a 7.15 ERA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I did not realize my ERA was that high with Jacob DeGrom. I might have used him way too much in the event. Uh, that's probably how he got it, ERA of 7.15. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, but that would probably be my lineup right there. That would probably be my God Squad. But it's currently not my main one. It's not my, it's not my main one. It's just one that if I were to do a God Squad, this would probably be it. So I just, I just want to make that clear. Oh, I don't know how you do that. That's that's interesting. Uh, probably not something you should have revealed, but okay. <laughs> I gotta report you to SDS now. You're gonna get banned. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. I, I but that's interesting. How do you end up meeting up with your friend like that? Like that's because I haven't been able to do that at all. All right, I'm gonna delete this squad because I really don't care about this. It's it's really, um, you know what? I I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the and do this game or do this um or get uh, get uh, get started with this lineup because I'm gonna do the run it back program or try to make progress on the run it back program. We'll see how that goes. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that thing we're talking about right now? All 
All right. So we got to get hits. We got to get total bases. And we need to get strikeouts with these guys. So let's see how this goes. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I think you may have just found the glitch in the game. But I, I'm not going to do that. I, I try to stay away from ranked seasons. I, like I said, I'm terrible. But that's cool that you found a glitch in it that allows you to do that. Was he seriously just about to overrun that that liner? Wow. Batting third, the left fielder, number 23, John Nope, nope, not scoring. Hmm. Well, I mean, look, I already have Billy Wagner. So... The first baseman, number 23, Edwin. I, I already have Billy, so I'm not I'm not worried about trying to get uh, trying to do ranked seasons. But I appreciate this um this bit of advice here. It's very interesting that you and your friend have found this glitch. So good work on that. Really good work. I'm sure now it's going to be like <laughs> uh, exploited. On uh, uh, maybe other people already know about this. I this is the first that I'm hearing. So, but that's cool that you found a glitch in this. Batting it, the third baseman, number forty-eight, Pablo. I mean, me personally, if I'm worried of uh, like. I would do rank seasons for parallel XP, but I if I'm gonna do that, I might as well just go play versus CPU against the Rockies. I feel like that's one of the better ways to do it. The event is also pretty quick, so I would do the event too. But no, no Mets players have been in the event as of late, not since John Owlrude. I really have had no need to grind the event other than if I was like they did a Tops Now event where they had extra cards and everything and I grinded it out anyway for uh, for Altuve and whoever the other one was I, I think it was a pitcher but I've completely forgotten But either way, like, that was the last time I grinded the event. Come on, Andrelton. See, Robin Young? See, Andrelton Simmons could end up doing this. Why, uh, why did you have trouble with this? You usually suck in events. Well, there we go. I stuck in. I stuck in ranked seasons, but I do pretty all right in uh, in the in the event. So there you go.
opposite, uh, uh, we just have different approaches, I guess. Well, it's also like an adjustment, you know, ranked seasons is nine inning games, so you really have to pace yourself and not try to do too much too early. Whereas the events, you're usually limited to three or six innings, so the game's much shorter, which means there's more pressure on you to get the runs in. So everyone's swinging, everyone's throwing gas, everyone's trying to keep all the strike, uh, all the, all the strikeouts high, and the home runs low. So the event is much different than it is in in uh, ranked seasons. Hell, even BR is much different. BR is probably the... If you're looking for offensive explosion, BR is probably your best bet because from what I understand, the ratings are a little more juiced in BR. I've, I've gotten the program done at least three or four times this year. The first baseman, Which is good, because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to get the program done. That's the only way I can ever go 12-0. But see, it forced me It forced me to play the game. It forced me to play that mode. I mean... For the program, you just go with the missions. And then whoever whoever you're comfortable with, like You know, I probably if Alonzo were to come up, I'd probably take him. If um if Shohei Otani, the pitcher, were to come up, I'd take him. So it's just a matter of finding the cards that you think will do best for you, but you also have to keep in mind the missions that are there. Like there are player specific missions for player specific cards. You know, the uh, several mistakes that I made were that some of the flashback live series, well, yeah, that's uh, mixing up the flashbacks with the live with their live series versions. I've made that mistake several times. So I'd say follow the missions because here's the other thing too. If you, uh, like some people, I, I know a lot of online people are not the, are not the type of people to help you out, but in BR, there are some people that if you if you have a player lead off, sometimes they'll help you with the with the mission. Like I uh, like one one mission that I did was with Sean Rodriguez. I had to get a home run with him or whatever. And the guy that I played against, I batted Sean lead off. He let me get that home run. He let me get an inside the park home run. And I immediately quit after that. Because he ult he did me the ultimate favor, and that helped me get closer to uh, that helped me get uh, eventually get Matt Harvey and whatever card that I picked at the time. I think that was Trevor's story that I ended up going with in that BR program. But yeah, sometimes that happens, and I think people understand that. But just be careful because sometimes people are assholes. The real assholes. So, I, I think you can tell about the quality of a person based on BR. Like, are they people that are trying to get missions done? 
Because some guys, they'll say they'll do, they're just interested in the missions and they'll give you the win. And then you help them and then they don't, they don't quit. They just keep going. And it's kind of like, okay, you dick. I helped you. Why are why aren't you giving? Why aren't you returning the favor? So you you just gotta be careful sometimes. But there are people out there who, if they see what it is that you're trying to do, they'll help you do it. And I think that's really great. And I wish we had more people like that. But it's very few and far in between. <coughs> Otherwise, just try and, you know, do everything you can. Now batting, the pitcher, Terry. You know, you got to do the missions. You can do the um, 40 total bases, I think, gets you, like, 40 program stars or something like that. I have to go back and check, but I believe that's what it was, what it is. So if you could just get... You know, a bunch of total bases. If you have a high-scoring affair, hey, guess what? You just you, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get that mission done, and you'll get a lot of program stars for it. Uh, hold on, guys. All right, I have to turn my phone on silent because this is getting rather annoying. So, yeah, BR is great now. Before it used to be a pain in the ass, and I can tell you one of the worst, one of the worst cards to ever come out of BR. Last year, 99 overall Gary Carter with the New York Mets. I tried him, his swing was absolute dog shit. It is horrible. Absolutely horrible that that 99 Gary, uh, overall Gary Carter. That was such a disrespect that SDS did. Have I ever gone 12 and 0? No. Nope. The closest, like I said earlier, was being 7 and 0 or 8 and 0. That was about the closest. So I I could go quite a distance, but I'm not. Um, but I've never been 12 and 0. I, I ended up buying Gary Carter last year because I think it was like 500000 uh, Again, keep in mind that last year there was no BR program. So the only way you could get that Gary Carter card was either buy off the auction block or go 12-0 and 0 in BR. Then it just takes practice, that's all. It just takes practice. You could get you could get a lot of wins. You know? You really can. Believe me, if I could go seven and zero or eight and zero, I think you could too. I, I I and I was so lucky that I was streaming that too, because as soon as it because like my reaction to that, I think it's one of my one of the streams that I posted on. YouTube and everything, so it's there. I just, I don't remember which one it was. The battle, the right field, Jason so have fun sit, is, or sifting through uh, three hours worth of uh, content streams, finding that stream. I mean, I've only done BR a few t I've streamed BR a few times this year, so... Atta boy, Edwin. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Now put some joy to watch. Number 85. So, it just takes practice, man. I, I'll tell you this though, BR 
you know, it's it, that free entry draft. Okay, I gotta tell you this story real quick. So, um, when I was playing MLB 16, the show, okay, I, this was after I played MLB 15, obviously, but I had just gotten it, and I was, I was, this is when I discovered BR. And I obviously didn't do too well in it. I, I think I lost both games or whatever. So I was like, okay, I'll take the show pack because it's a free entry anyway. You know, I'll take it. So I open up the show pack. I get to the last card. The last card was a 99 Bryce Harper. No joke. Seriously, 99, uh, 99 Harper. In, from a free pack in BR. I was like, holy shit. I, I had to check to make sure that card was real, like that I wasn't, you know, dreaming or whatever, because it was incredible to see that, to see that 99. Yeah. And then, of course, he sucked for that year, and then his ratings went down to a gold, so... I mean, it didn't last long, unfortunately, but that was that was by far one of my best pulls in <laughs> MLB The Show. And that was before they had all the animations and everything. Like, if you if you stumbled upon your um, if you just stumbled upon the diamond card, it was there for you to see. You know, there wasn't this animation of trying to guess who it is, what's the rating based on the color, or who's, you know, what stadium. There was none of that in MLB The Show 16. It was simply, you open the pack, and the card was already flipped for you. You just had to put it in your inventory. God, MLB The Show has come such a long way in only, in only six ye or five years. You know, I still remember when Diamond Dynasty was even first a thought in MLB the show twelve uh, in MLB twelve the show. What's up, Eric boy? Yeah, right now, guys, we're just I'm just doing the run it back program. I'm doing the stats to get um to get the to get the program done. All right. Thanks, Camerons. Appreciate you being here. Hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow. Or whenever you can join in in my streams again. I look forward to seeing you again. God damn it. Oh, well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, we're just trying to grind out for Kaletic, uh, Valenzuela, uh, Valenzuela, and uh, Matt Carpenter. Strike three, sit down. Now batting. I think the Scooble, uh, actually, no. The Scooble card isn't the only uh, starting pitcher in the Run It Back program. You have that Luis Severino card as well that I've still yet to get. And the Eugenio Suarez, which is obviously not a starting pitcher, but that's the other card that I still need to grab from the Run It Back program. But right now I'm only just interested in Valenzuela, Carpenter, and... Um, and Kalenic. God, Kalenic. The one, uh, like, you know, it was so easy in 2019 to believe that Edwin Diaz was the guy. That he was going to be that missing piece that we needed in 2015. Or not in 2015, I'm sorry, not 2015, but 2019. And you know, looking back now, I mean, Diaz is still a solid closer. Don't get me wrong, but the fact that Cano 
hasn't even played for the Mets, or didn't even play for the Mets this year. And who knows what the hell he's going to be doing next year, next season. I pray to God that at some point he just calls it a career. Because this is ridiculous. Cano is making way too much money. Way too much money for sit not uh, for not playing right now. And I'm not comfortable with that. But, I mean, I don't blame Cano for wanting to get as much money as he can. Wouldn't you like to sit at home and, or wouldn't you like to collect the kind of money that he collects? I certainly would. But that being said, I don't think he's going to be playing for the Mets in the... Or starting for them, unless eh, maybe he might do it against a righty, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect him to do it against a lefty. I, th I think he'd be just a bench bat in that case. All right. God, it was just such a positive vibe. Uh, I, I guess I gotta do this because I really, really, really need to rant on the New York Jets. So, why am I a Jets fan? Good fucking question. The answer? I have no freaking idea. I blame my eight-year-old self. Like, if I had just... If I had just walked away from that game, uh, watching that game with my dad and everything, if I had just done something else, maybe I could have been a Giants fan. At least then I would have two Super Bowls still to get me happy. And this pre, and probably this false hope that Daniel Jones is going to be the savior of the Giants. But with that being aside, the Jets are a complete joke in the in the NFL. I mean, I'm I'm really embarrassed. And the sad part is, it's not like they've been a joke most recently. They've been a joke for over 10 years. 10 years. 2013, this idea that Tim Tebow was going to save the franchise from Mark Sanchez. We don't even put him in. We, uh, we, we instead throw in Bryce Harper, or not Bryce Harper, Bryce Petty. So we just signed Tim Tebow to a contract at the end of 2012, hoping that he was going to be, or not the end of 2012, but the end of the 2011-2012 season, hoping that he was going to be the guy that would save New York or save the Jets and he didn't even get to play. What was the point of signing him if we weren't going to ever play him? But that's not what I'm ranting about with the with the Jets. That's just an example of what a joke this franchise is. But you can actually look most recently as to this past this past Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. I mean, if you seriously want a joke or want to see a joke of a franchise, just look at the Jets. Alright. This... I mean, the big thing is, the Bills just freaking passed all over them. Who the hell leaves Stephon Diggs one-on-one, -on -one and it's not even your best corner? What? Robert Sala, what the hell are you thinking? Why are you putting this quarterback, uh, this quarterback, on Stephon Diggs if he is going to be constantly burned, 
time after time after time, and the Bills are exploiting it. They are exploiting the fact that Stefan Diggs has an easy matchup. I'm surprised they didn't do it more. You left him one-on-one, -on -one. no safety help. You just had the corner. What the fuck are you thinking? Oh, well, it, uh, you know, give it time, it might work. No, it's not worked. It didn't work the first time. What makes you think it's going to work the second time? It's clear it did not work. So either drop a safety on the best on the best receiver of the opposing team, or don't even bother putting corners out there. Just have to uh, just just let the wide receivers go ahead and, and just run all over the field. Give guys like Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson just give them all the time they need. And I'm sure they'll find those receivers wide open eventually. That was a disaster of a game. A complete and utter disaster. And how Robert Sala is not taking responsibility for it. How he's not saying we screwed up, we'll go back and look at it. Instead he's defending it, saying, well, if we just give it some more time, it'll do it. What the fuck? You are a defensive court. You were a defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, and you're telling me that you you are not willing to take responsibility for this disaster. Seriously, if that's what I have to do, you know, for the next two or three years, because I'm sure that's when the franchise will finally wise up and say Salah needs to go. Just give him his pink slip now. To hell with it. I mean, Zach Wilson, to hell with it. At this point, to hell with it. It's just another wasted high overall pick that the Jets could not turn into anything special. That is sad. Maybe, maybe... You know, I could see why Pete Manning decided that it was better for him to just stay out of the 98 draft because he knew he was going to the Jets. He knew it. And he saw that this, this was a disaster of a franchise. And he decided he was going to stay an extra year and wait to get drafted by the Colts. That turned out to be the best fucking decision for him. And probably for the NFL. Because in all likelihood, the Jets would have ruined Peyton Manning, too. So, we ruined Stan Darnold. We're ruining Zach Wilson. We basically gave Mike White no shot of ever being an NFL starting quarterback ever again. I mean, how many freaking quarterbacks are we going to just take? And throw them right in the trash. We like how many times are the Jets gonna do that? How many times? Cause I'm pretty sick of it. I'm pretty sick of being told this is this guy is the next Joe Namath, and then two or three years down the line he may he ain't even on the team. I'm sick of this. And you know what else I'm sick of? I'm sick of Jet fans. They gave up on Mike White after the first quarter. The first quarter. They were like, oh, this guy's a... Listen, 400 yards was pretty freaking amazing. Did anyone expect that Mike White was going to replicate that? If you expected that, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot, because there is no way that he was going to throw 400 yards again. I set the standard at 250, and he clearly did not meet that. It was a very rough game for Mike White, but Jet fans saying, oh, well, I never cheered on Mike White. Listen to me. He gave us a moment. A moment 
of, uh, for one, for one game, one game, Jet fans believed that Mike White was the savior. And in all likelihood, we are never going to see another performance like that again. We will likely never see 500, uh, 400 yards from, from someone like that ever again. And yet, we just shoot him up, spit him out like he was yesterday's news. Shame on you, Jet fans. Either you bought in to Mike White, or you never bought into him. But you cannot say that you were all excited about Mike White throwing 400 yards against the Cincinnati Bengals and then look at that previous game and be like, well, he sucks now. I never was a fan of him. Bullshit, you hypocrites. Bullshit. Bullshit. I'm so, I'm so fed up with this fan base. I'm so fed up with this, with this team. Get a new coach. This uh, this entire organization needs to needs to be completely dissolved. This is an embarrassment of a of a team. A complete and utter embarrassment. You need new owners. You need a new GM. You need a new coach. You need new players. You just need fucking everything new. Everything. Everything has to be new. And you guys see why I wanted to save this towards the end. Because this is this is how angry I am with this team and this fan base. I'm angry that the team constantly promises us that they're going to put out a better product. And it has not happened for the last 10 years. I'm sick of the fan base getting their hopes up over a QB like Mike White. And then when he doesn't perform, just spit him out and pretend like he he's like another Mark Sanchez or Geno Smith. I'm sick of it. This is life as a Jets fan, where the only happiness for us is when the Jets don't play. When the, when it turns to January, all the way up until friggin' July, Jet fans are happy. You know why they're happy? Because they're not watching their team suck. Jet fans will never be happy. We never will. I am bound to this team forever. Because I made the decision in when I was eight years old to be a freaking Jets fan. I'm stuck. Because I'm not going to hop over to another team that is doing well. That would make me a bandwagon, and I'm not going to be one of those fans. So, yes. Pick any other team but the Jets. That's my best advice for you, Eric Boy. Pick anyone but the Jets. Now batting, the left fielder, Don Mattingly. It's not worth it. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the... Should I... No, I'm committed at this point. I'm committed. I've been a fan of this of this team for nearly 20 years. I might as well have a ball. Uh, I might as well have a ball and chain around my ankle with the Jets logo on it. That's basically describing this life commitment that I made to be a Jets fan. And the sad part is, I was spoiled as a kid. I was spoiled as a Jets fan as a kid. Because I saw greats like Chad Pennington, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Vilma, Curtis Martin, um, Lavernius Cole, Santana Moss, Kerry right Rhodes, John Abraham, Sean Ellis. I saw this team in greatness. 
I saw it and I and I thought this was going to be this was going to be a solid franchise. Boy, howdy, was I wrong. And the sad part is, as Jets fans, we can't even say, well, it was Tom Brady all those years. I mean, it was Tom Brady. He, him and the Patriots basically dominated. But now the, the Tom Brady has been out of, of the AFC East for almost two seasons. So what now? We're going we're gonna to start blaming Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills? It's, I, I can't blame anymore. Because the reality is, I know what's to blame. The owners, the GM, the coach, the quarterback, the player, the, what, the players. Yeah, I, I know you're a Packers fan, Eric Boy. You were asking me earlier. Uh, excuse me. You were asking me earlier about uh, the Seahawks, and the only thing I could really talk about with the Seahawks and Packers was Jamal Adams. And I basically defended Jamal. Which I guess makes me in turn a hypocrite because I freaking blasted him when he cheered on the fact that the Jets won a game last year. And I told him on Twitter, I mean, he probably didn't see it, but... I basically told him on Twitter he had no right to be cheering on his teammates. He did, uh, he disowned them. He was a he was a terrible teammate those last couple years. And he can't even he's not even he's not even a safety. He's a linebacker. Plain and simple. He can't he can't defend the pass, which is a shame because the safety the two safeties are the only are the last line of defense. for a defense to prevent the quarterback from throwing a deep pass for a touchdown. They're the last line of defense. And Jamal Adams can't do it. He couldn't do it in New York. He's certainly not doing it in Seattle. But, the, uh, but this rant is not about Jamal Adams. This is about the New York Jets. And I think I need to close it there because if I get if I find one more thing, I'm gonna end up getting angrier. So that's my rant on why I'm a Jets fan. The fact is I have no idea other than I picked them, you know, seventeen years ago. I picked them 17 years ago, and I've been stuck to them ever since. Through some of the good and most of the bad. And I'm not about to do it now. The sad part, uh, no, no, that's it. That's it. You know, again, I do apologize for getting very angry, for yelling, but let that just show, like, how much I care about this team. How much passion I have for this team. I would love to see nothing more than Jet players bring a Super Bowl back to New York. I would love to see nothing more than that. But well, as I look at it right now, there is no shot of that. There's no shot. I don't even think Jesus, God, whatever. No, I don't think anyone in the great beyond is ever going to, is even going to help me with this. The Jets are a complete disaster. They've been a complete disaster for, for 10 years. And I see, I see this being a complete disaster for another 10. In all likelihood, they're, uh, they're, uh, I'm going to end up dying 
without seeing the Jets win a Super Bowl. I've seen Tom Brady win seven, but I've never seen my Jets win one. I'm just done. I'm done. Not done with football, but I am done. I, I I'm done tuning into the Jets, thinking that I'm gonna get something to cheer about. I'm done, you know. I'm done dealing, uh, seeing Jet fans go on Twitter and basically complain about how Mike White sucks now, and and these fans they uh, they start chants of "We want Joe Flacco in the in in the game" when we know very well, uh, very damn well. That Joe Flacco is not gonna serve, is not gonna save this franchise. I'm not even sure Tom Brady could save this franchise. Now that left you, John. Tom Brady would look at it and say, and basically be like the Grinch, wouldn't touch it with a 39 and a half foot pole. You're out, Tom Brady? What does that mean? Would say that. Are you saying you're leaving and Tom Brady would say that? He wouldn't touch it with the... I, I can't imagine anyone who would want to touch this franchise with a 39 and a half foot ball. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised at this point that Zach Wilson hasn't hasn't asked for this or Quinnen Williams or CJ Mosley. All the other guys, fine, I understand. They're there's this is their chance to show what they can do, but we know what Zach Wilson can do. We know what CJ Mosley can do. We know what Quinnen Williams can do. Yeah, it would be better if he just if he got traded. So I, Eric Boy, I I wish I had a solution. I wish I did. But all I can really do is just come on here and rant about the Jets and how their defense sucks. Their offense wasn't wasn't any better, and this team needs a complete overhaul from top to bottom. Yeah, even the cowboy needs to get needs to be thrown out of the locker room. Me be a GM, I'd lose my damn mind. I'd lose because uh, here's the thing: I don't think I don't think that Joe Douglas is really given the reins as to what he can do. MTV money, I appreciate you stopping in. How's it going, by the way? Is uh, is um, is uh, Chowderhead's stream done? Is that why, uh, or are you just popping in here for a quick hang? Don't mind me. I was just I was just talking about the Jets and
Every week, this team just seems to frustrate me. Every week. I find a new thing. You would think I'd get tired of ranting and ranting and ranting. It's good winning the stream tonight. All right. Now, Chata is still... Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'm just going to see how much progress I made in my seventh inning. Oh, looks like I got Valenzuela. Very nice. Okay, cool. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here, man. Or, well, <laughs> sorry. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, looks like we made a little bit more progress. We got the Home Run Derby card as well as the Fernando Valenzuela card. So if I go over here to player programs real quick, over to run it back, that puts me at 70, which means... Which means I just need a few more, and I'll have Matt Carpenter and Jared Kolenic, and then the uh, running back program. But you know what, guys? I'm I'm very tired. Um, that uh, rant just took a lot out of me. Allie. Okay. Yeah. All right, Allie. Thanks for being here. Um, but I'm calling it a stream because I'm tired. I I'm done ranting on. The Jets, I'm done, you know, so I, I'm just done in general. Uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in, even if it was only for a moment. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow me here on Twitch and or subscribe. Either one would make me a very happy person. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That way you know when I post my streams like this one right here. And if you want to know when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter at JeffreyWarner3. The link is in the about page. It's underneath the stream here. So go check that out. I'll always tweet whenever I go live. You can also turn on notifications here on Twitch. That way Twitch sends you an email every time I start up a stream. Overall, this was good. We got the Robin Yount program done, albeit not, not doing the extra base hits, but... I really don't care, and we also managed to make some more progress in the Run It Back program uh, and do a full-on rant on the New York Jets. So, uh, overall, a great stream. Uh, tomorrow, I'm expecting to either continue on with my Mets Super Fractor uh, team build, or I'll just continue to try to finish up on the on the run it back program because we made a lot of progress tonight and I thought and I'd like to continue that as well so I, I hope you'll tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern and until then guys have a great night